Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. Um, so one of the questions that I asked that I was um, that I received from you guys was, how do I do intuitive readings? Now, in my um, in my online tarot course, it's actually the fourth class that I'm going to be uh, teaching my students how to read intuitively. So if you're curious about that, you know, the next time I have it available, you should join in. Um, but in this video, I'm going to kind of give you a quick little, just a quick little show, like uh, as much as I could show you how I read intuitively. Um, it's different every client. I will say that some clients are open energetically and some are not. And the intuitive hits will come and they don't for others. So it just depends. Um, and that's just the name of the game. So the first thing is when I'm doing a reading for somebody, um, it helps to have a question, okay? But you don't always have to have a question. So nine times out of 10, my clients will give me a question, but the ones that don't, um, I literally just read intuitively. I pull cards. And whatever comes through, I'm literally trusting what comes through and saying it. And for the most part, it's accurate. Um, so when it comes to reading the tarot without a spread, because there's, you could read the tarot with a spread, you know, the spread is like card number one means this card number two will mean this. It's, I don't, I usually don't use spreads unless I absolutely have to or want to. Um, I will use a spread for like my birthday readings and stuff. Um, but for the most part, I am just pulling cards. Um, so let's do an example. Let's say someone is asking, let's do a love love question. Um, what does the future look like for me and my boyfriend? Okay, so I'm pulling cards. What does the future look like for me and my boyfriend? Now, when I'm pulling, when I'm reading intuitively, I do not have a set number of cards that I pull. I do not have a set way I'm going to set them up. I literally just put them on the table. I pull the cards however many I feel like I need to pull. Okay. I usually pull three cards at a time. I like the number three. I feel like three is a good number for reading. But sometimes I pull four. Sometimes I pull two. So it just depends. Okay. So how, what does the future look like for me and my husband or my, me and my boyfriend? <laughs> Let's see. And this is not for me and my husband. Okay. So I would, you know, pull some cards, lay them down. And usually, like I said, I start with three and then I just kind of look at them and in my mind, I'm already looking at, okay, Knight of Swords usually means this, 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 and this. But I'm, you're also reading intuitively. So what sticks out? So the first thing that I would say sticking out is that you guys are going through a hardship. Okay? You guys are going through a hardship. And to me, it's like the five of, of pentacles, the people in that card look like they're walking towards the next card I pulled, which is the Page of Swords. And I would say you guys are going through a hardship and it looks like, you know, they're, they're leading towards somebody in this relationship is taking on more than they can handle. So that's kind of what I would say with that. And then I would say Knight of Wand energy is someone who is very impulsive or very, you know, they like to take charge and take action. And maybe they, they're not listening to what's going on. Okay, they're not listening to the other person or, um, you know, they're too aggressive and you're more of a thought person. So then I would kind of divide it up. There's two people here, a knight and a page. So it's kind of like, you know, which one do you intuitive, intuitively feel is your client and which one is the other person in the relationship? And I was instantly feeling my client would have been the page of swords they are taking on more than they can handle and they're kind of holding it in mentally because the swords is about your thoughts and your mind versus the knight of wands where their lover is aggressive and wanting to take action and wanting to solve problems but maybe he's not communicating there's there's no there's no sense of of emotion here because there's no cups in the reading so you see what i mean like 
you, t you really take it apart like that. So then let's say, okay, well, let's see what else comes through. Oh, we have the moon card and we have the judgment card. So I could say, okay, there's some lies, some secrets that are coming out. Okay, some lies or secrets coming out of the woodwork. Moon card is, you know, illusions. Moon isn't always intuition and like sweet stuff. The moon can also be like lies, deceits, um, not seeing things for what they are or shit coming out of the woodwork, you know? So that's kind of side by side with the judgment card to me. It's like someone's speaking secrets here. So there could be some secrets that are coming out. And then at the at the bottom of the reading, it's just like this is what's holding this whole relationship all together. The justice card. So I would kind of say like the relationship has always been unbalanced. You guys have always been wanting to, you know, seek balance in the relationship. For the most card part, when I'm doing these readings, I read upright. Okay, so upright meaning all of my cards are facing upright. Because I've learned to, if I feel like for me, this would have been a justice in reverse, not balanced in the relationship. But I don't have to pull it reverse to read it that way. I just intuitively feel like okay no this is an unbalanced relationship so I'm gonna read it that way um so there's that too you know um so then I would say okay well let's pull some let's pull some oracle cards on this so you know pick an oracle deck and because it's a love reading I'll use the romance angels so and then you could pull some oracle and when I pull oracles I usually pull one or three I don't like to go overboard with the oracles, but I also don't like to, you know, if I need to just stick with one, I'll stick with one. Um, but usually I don't go more than three. Um, so then it says, let your friends help you. Ask for support and ask from and ask for and accept support from others. So the nice thing about the oracles is that you're not reading it super intuitively as you would the tarot. Um, but sometimes you're going to pull an oracle card. Like this one's perfect. Let your friends help you. It's kind of saying then I would tell my client, when it comes to this issue, if there's lies coming out of the woodwork with your significant other, you guys are not communicating, you're heading through a, a rough patch in the future, letting your friends help you is, you know, seeking, seeking advice from other people. But then I would also say, be very careful though, how much of your relationship you're making public with other people. So I would normally stop there and I wouldn't pull another oracle because this one's already giving me enough. But let's say I pulled <laughs> one that doesn't make sense. So let's say I pulled, um, cause some of these are like calling in your soulmate. So let's pull it. Let's say I pulled that one. And then I'd be like, well, what the fuck? Like that doesn't really go with what the theme of what's happening here. Um, so then I would pull another oracle or two more to kind of help me here. Or that's part of intuitive reading is you may pull a card and calling in your soulmate, your prayers, affirmations, visualizations help bring you together. That may be hard to interpret for this specific kind of a reading, but there's a reason why you pulled it. So that's where your intuition comes through, okay? And then how would you put that into it? A lot of times when I'm doing the intuitive readings, you know like when you're automatic writing and you're writing and you're just writing whatever comes through? That's why I like to do the video readings because I feel like I get to a point sometimes where I'm talking and I'm just saying what's coming out. I'm just saying the first thing that pops into my head and you get used to that. But the thing you'll notice is when you're done with an intuitive reading, you will not remember what you just read for because you're channeling. So understand you have to trust yourself to do those readings and they're not always going to make sense after. And sometimes you'll be saying things and you'll be like, man, I really hope this client resonates with what I'm saying because it feels so specific. Chances are they will. And sometimes you won't even know because sometimes your clients, they won't email you and tell you how they like the reading or whatnot. And then sometimes they will. So it just depends. But when I'm doing intuitive readings, I just pull the cards. I lay them out however I want. You guys will notice sometimes I lay the cards out like some ways like that. Sometimes I do a pyramid. Sometimes I just do like the three. Sometimes I cross one over. I mean, it just whatever I feel called to do at that time. But I always find that they always fit. Like everything always works out. And you will be picking decks that are specifically meant for that client. 
because you just naturally were like, oh, I feel so pulled to use my angel deck or I feel so pulled to use this deck. And it's like, you'll find later on as you're doing the reading, it's like, wow, I pulled that deck for a reason because everything that, it's, that I'm pulling is like making sense for them. <laughs> so that's kind of how I do it. You know, there's, it's hard to teach intuitive reading because a lot of it is trusting what is coming to your mind. Um, but you're not just reading like, okay, the Hierophant, okay, religious factors. It's, you're not just reading textbook tarot. You're also reading, well, what could this mean in other aspects, you know? Um, so like in a relationship, oh, the Hierophant could be, maybe you guys are gonna get married. That's basic, you know, that's basic. Anyone would think that marriage with the Hierophant. But if you look deeper, it's, well, maybe you guys need to court yourselves, court the relationship, go to the old fashioned type of dating again. That's what I see with the Hierophant. Cause I, I look at it deeper. I look at the Hierophant as like um, old school. And then, so when I think of him as love, I think of him as old school dating. You know, that's how I intuitively make those connections. Um, eight of Wands. So in love, I'm, I'm using love as an example because love is like probably the easiest and my most favorite topic to read for. Um, eight of Wands for love. You know, you look at Eight of Wands and you think, okay, mo you're moving fast. You're moving fast in this relationship or you're moving too fast in the relationship or you guys are focused on the future in the relationship or things are going going to go smoothly or, you know, there could be moving on to the next chapter in the relationship. Page of Pentacles, an opportunity coming your way in the relationship. Maybe he will be proposing. Maybe she will be proposing. Maybe you guys will be getting an offer on the house. Or maybe you will be, um, you know, it, it just depends. Like you you have to take into consideration other factors. Um, what else? The Empress. When it comes to relationships. The Empress could be a lot of things. She could be mom energy is too strong in the relationship. Maybe you have a nosy mother-in-law. <laughs> Maybe you have um, mommy issues. And, and so, you know, you're having a hard time connecting with your children. Maybe you are, um, you know, you're pre pregnant. This could be a pregnancy announcement. This could be also infertility if you're looking at it in, an, in a negative sense. Um, well, infertility is not always negative. I'm sorry, but you know what I mean, like in a in a reversed sense. Um, or Empress energy can be feeling disconnected with your with your lover, and the spark is not there. You know, um, Empress can be motherhood. I mean, it, it it could be so many different things, and that's what happens with the tarot is that you. It, you you could go down the rabbit hole with it and go deep. Um, and and once you get beyond textbook tarot, that's how, that's like, I just thought of that phrase right now. <laughs> textbook tarot. <laughs> and you could look at it at the nine of swords as not just nightmares and an inability to sleep. You could look at nine of swords as anxiety, as having a lot of things on your to-do list for the week. Um, this could be somebody who is um, remember you remembering like oh shit I forgot to do that thing, or nine of swords could be um, back pain. I've read that before for a client. That was an intuitive hit that I got. I was so focused on just the fact that the swords looked like they were going through her back that for that specific client I remember reading for them saying something about back pain or headache because it looked like it was going through the head. And that client got back to me saying that they had been experiencing back pain and headaches. So shit like that, sometimes I don't always see back pain with this card, but for some reason that client, it did, and that's because I was listening to my intuition. So that's another example of that. You're not always going to see back pain when you look at Nine of Swords, you know what I mean? Um, this could be... <laughs> page of pentacles could be you know the textbook tarot this would be um you know an inspiring being inspired to take on a new practice that's usually what the textbook would say for this card but sometimes maybe this is this is um someone finding their their love for themselves again they're being more comfortable with their sexual energy with themselves this could like literally be um 
uh, what, what's the word? Um, oh my God, what is it called? <laughs> Masturbation. Like, I know that that's a lot, but sometimes you see it as that, you know, it's like he's having, he's having this new joy for him himself again. Um, what else? Like, like the wand suits in general, I see them as very sexual energy cards. Um, okay. So like the four of pentacles, this could be a card of, um, keeping to yourself. This could be a card of being clingy. This could be a card of needing to not spend money. You see how you could see it in different ways. So I'm going to be going through all this shit like in my tarot course. But um, that's how I read tarot is like once you get beyond what the textbook says, you are able to see the cards in so many different ways. And that's what happens when I'm doing readings is that one one the four of pentacles will be one way for one client and then i'll do another reading two minutes later and it'll be something different so trusting what comes to your mind and rolling with it so that is how you read intuitively my loves sorry for it being you know so sh quick or whatnot but um it's hard to teach how to do a reading without a spread because i just throw them down and i read it um but that's kind of an idea of how I do it. If you guys have any questions, please leave comments and I will get back to you guys um, and tell me. And if you want to see another video about something else, let me know because I'm always looking, whoops, I'm always looking for ideas for um, videos. So if you have any ideas, let me know. But other than that, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye, loves.